Attention, this zone might be too techy for you. Enter at your own risk. Here we have the Hoover Decade 80 and a drinking bird toy. Whee! Gulp, 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 gulp. Okay. Uh, the Hoover Decade 80. Um, I picked this up at my local Goodwill for a low price of only three dollars. Um, it actually had a six dollar price tag on it, but um, apparently everything today in the store was uh, half off, so I only paid three dollars for it. And this is in very, um, it's in uh, good shape. Um, you can see down here on the base plate, you can see some of the wear marks down there. But overall, this is a very good cleaner. Uh, runs very well. Um, the Decade 80, for the new people who might be newcomers into the vacuum enthusiast world, um, I used to be a big vacuum enthusiast when I was a little kid. Um, I really don't have a big um, interest in vacuums anymore. Uh, but I still do a little bit, uh, just to keep my childhood alive, and I've always wanted one of these machines. Um, the Hoover Decade was a, was a vacuum cleaner in the convertible line. Uh, the Hoover convertible was one of the most popular and most iconic uh, vacuums Hoover ever produced. It spanned from 1957 with the uh, Model 67, I believe it was, um, maybe the Model 64 or 60, I think it was the Model 64, that started the whole convertible line, and it ended in 1994 with the Special Edition Supremacy Series, which apparently the Supremacy, from what I've been told, uh, the Supremacy Series was only available to um, special retailers. Uh, you couldn't, and that might be the reason why they're so hard to find. Um, but the very last, but this is one of the very last convertible-based machines before they went over to the Elite series, um, which came out in the late 80s and ran up until about 2007 or so. Um, but this is a sign of the times from Hoover. Um, and this is the Decade 80. I'm not sure the actual color scheme here. It is a green, um, I want to say it's, uh, hunter green, but I'm not entirely sure. Well, I'm not. I think hunter green is dark green, or is it light green? I'm not sure of the exact color, but it's green on darker green, on lighter green. Uh, I'm not sure of the exact color palette that they use. I want to say it's hunter green, this down here, but I think this might be hunter green though, because I think hunter green is darker. But um, anyway, I'm gonna give you a tour of this machine. Okay, so here's the Decade 80 again in a little bit more of a better situation away from the banister here. Uh, let's go ahead and um, take a little tour of the machine. Have a uh, plastic handle here. Uh, there is no handle grip here. Um, this is just a plastic uh, handle, no uh, rubber grip here. And uh, I didn't mention this, but this cleaner would have been released uh, in the early 80s, I believe is when the Decade series came out. Is somewhere in the early 80s, this would have been in the 80s line. Um, that might have been why it was called Decade 80, uh, because it was released in the 80s. And plus, it also marked Hoover's uh, eighth decade. Uh, so, I mean, 1988 would have been Hoover's uh, eighth decade. So, um, I don't know. Not sure why they called it Decade 80. Um, might have had something to do with those two reasons. But anyway, um, back to the tour of the machine. Plastic handle. Um, again, uh, it's very modern to what some of the other Hoover cleaners at the time had. Uh, kind of the same style. It's uh, just plastic. There's no rubber grip here. Uh, we have the Hoover logo embedded here that says Hoover Power Surge. And the Power Surge feature basically is just an extra feature on the switch. Uh, and when you push the switches on the back of the handle here, when you push the switch down, that turns it on. But if you hold the switch down one position farther, it goes into what's called power surge mode, where it uses more power. Uh, the uh, uh, RPMs uh, of the motor go up, and you hold that button down to engage uh, the power surge function. Got your, um, go around this side here, got your uh, power cord. Something I didn't know this machine had was a twistable cord here, so you can unwrap the whole uh, wad of cord at one swipe. Um, I thought this model didn't have it. Uh, usually convertible cords are quite short. Um, this is, 
I want to say this is about the exact same length as what's on my Auric XL Classic, I want to say. Maybe just a little shorter. I'm not entirely sure the exact length of the cord. Uh, here we have the, um, actually also on the back, <laughs> we have the air freshener here. This was a thing with Hoover Cleaners. They had air freshener. You could open that up. And you get this little vent here because you can get air freshener in here. It would freshen the air, so, or just minimum. I just had that off because I have no air freshener in there. Put in an air freshener. Um, and whatnot. Got the bag. An interesting note about the bag. <laughs> uh, when I first picked up this machine, uh, I wasn't going to buy it originally uh, because the zipper for the bag uh, was stuck. And I mean stuck. I mean, it wasn't budging. Uh, so ultimately, I took um, a little bit of lubricant and some time and some patience. And ultimately, I got the zipper to where it'll zip up and down and it isn't broken. So, um, the zipper ended up getting really stiff, so I'm going to have to see if I can lubricate that more and see if I can get it so that way it won't do that again. Um, I don't have bags for this. I mean, there is a bag in here, but there's someone else's dirt in it. <laughs> but again, I don't have any bags uh, for this. Uh, I have to go out and, uh, and uh, get some tomorrow. These take the Type A top fill bags uh, that Hoover had. And in fact, I believe the last time I knew uh, you could still buy those Type A bags at Wally World for about 90 some cents, I believe. I think they still might sell them, so I'll have to go check Wally World tomorrow and get a couple uh, and get a pack or two of bags. Maybe three or four since they're so cheap. Um, down here on the base plate, we have the um, height adjustment, which is controlled by this lever right down there. That's the height adjustment lever. Uh, cool thing with the Decade 80 model is they have a dual headlight in here. There's two bulbs. Uh, one of the bulbs is burned out. I have to take the hood off and um, uh, check that bulb. But i got to put two new bulbs in here because one of them is burnt out. I think it's this one that doesn't work. But this one does, I think. Or maybe it's reversed. But one of the bulbs doesn't work. I'm going to have to take the base plate off and check the bulbs. You can see the wear here um, on this here. Uh, but again, that's kind of to be expected. The cleaner is used, so I mean, you know, you do expect that. Give you the underside shot here. What goes on underneath? Let me just get down underneath here, and I think I may have to move it. No, I think we're good. Okay, I pulled it a little closer to the light here, so it's going to be easier to see. But underneath here, this is what made Hoover cleaners really well. This is what this is where the original term beater bar came from. It's a two-row brush wall. You see there's one brush there and one brush there, but there's also one beater pad and two beater pads. And basically, the beater pads, what these do is they uh, help uh, beat the pile of the carpet. So while the um, brush is sweeping the carpet to uh, uh, rejuvenate the carpet fibers, this beater bar here, metal bar, is beating the carpet to uh, release stubborn uh, dirt deep in the carpet pile. This brush is quite rusted. Um, you can buy generic aftermarket brushes for this. The most popular ones are the uh, CWP uh, brush rolls for this. Um, but uh, I haven't heard a lot of good things about the CWP brush rolls on here. Um, so, I don't know. Um, I do like having this metal brush roll with this beater bar pad. I mean, the brushes aren't, you know, too bad. I mean, you know, they're, you know, they're not too bad. I mean, but still, I mean, you know, if I can find an original brush roll to this that's in good shape, I'm going to pick it up and put it on here. Bottom plate isn't uh, too bad. Here's the bottom of the machine. It really isn't too bad. Um, I already checked underneath here. Let me just um, move this over here and want to release just like that. And uh, now the belt is right in here, so what's going to happen here is um, right in the middle there's going to be no, oh there we are, <laughs> right in the middle there's going to be no brushing action, so there's always going to be a distinct line in the middle because there's no brush here. But of course you overlap your strokes when you vacuum. To change the belt, you, or get to the brush roll, you move these two little lever latches and the base plate comes off. And here we have access. See, it's a little rusted in here. I did clean this out. You really can't tell. I'm going to have to do... I'm going to... Yeah, and it's a little rusted in here. This is dirt here, right here. But I already cleaned this out. I don't know why this... Re I don't know why that came back. I'm going to have to do a little bit more cleaning. 
Um, I did check the impeller and the fan, and uh, I didn't feel any chewing, so that's good. This is a plastic fan, um, and these plastic fans kind of break easy uh, because they are made out of plastic. Uh, the impeller works fine, and I don't feel any chewing on the blades. Um, I haven't got into the motor yet to take a look, but I don't feel any chewing or anywhere on the blade. So I think we're good. Um, again, these plastic blades break really easy. So um, this is what we call a dirty fan design. Uh, by that, the dirt passes through the fan before it goes to the bag. Newer vacuums are called clean air systems, where the dirt gets nowhere near the fan, and the fan is behind filters and other types of stuff. The fan is hidden away, um, away from the dirt. Um, technically, they're supposed to be better uh, at filtrating the air, uh, cleaner air systems, but some people say dirty air vacuums tend to have more suction down at the floor. Um, so, you know, there's a plus and minus there to both sides. But uh, this is a dirty fan design, so the dirt passes through this fan here before it goes to the bag. So, um, you know, you definitely want to be picking up nails or anything in there because, you know, that could break the fan really easy. So you definitely don't want to do that. And it's plastic, too. I mean, it's hard plastic, but it's plastic, so that will break. Um, here's the model number. Here's the rating plate for anybody interested. Um, I can't get it to focus. Uh, I can't get it to focus, darn you. Um, but anyway, the model is U4381-030. The Hoover Company and the serial number. I'm not sure if you can date uh, Hoover's by their serial number anymore. The serial number on this is 00205957. Um, if I remember, if I'm reading this correctly, that would have been made, this would have been made in 5 of 95, which doesn't really make sense because I don't think this cleaner was available in 1995. So I don't think you can date that through the model number, uh, through the uh, serial number. I'm thinking this machine is around maybe 82, 83. I'm not entirely sure when the Decade series came out. I don't know the exact date. Um, but I don't see anything in the model, in the serial number that hints to that. And of course you can't see it, but it says Made in USA. Yes, back when Hoover was made in the USA, not the cheap Chinese crap that they are now. Um, but yeah, that model number, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, that serial number. So, um, I don't think you can date cleaners from their serial number anymore. Hoover's you could, but I don't, I don't see anything on that serial number that points to a uh, manufacturing date. It's 120 volts, 60 hertz, AC only. And it's a 6 amp cleaner. A very low wattage. So let's go ahead and put the base plate back on. Also, um, I believe this model does have uh, revisions for it. I'm not entirely sure. Um, but there was a set of cleaning tools that you could get for the Decade. And all the convertible series of cleaners could have cleaning tools. Um, and the reason why it was called the convertible was because um, when you attach the cleaning hose to the collar in the bag um, on the original uh, models, when you would attach the cleaning hose, it would automatically shift the cleaner's motor into a higher speed uh, for tool use. Um, and ultimately, they came out with a pan converter that goes over this brush and snaps into the front uh, with a hose that comes out on the bottom. Um, I'm not entirely sure if this cleaner supports it. I don't see any... Well, maybe it does. I'm not entirely sure. I know that there was... I think there was a tool set attached. I think there was a tool uh, set that you could buy for this. And it was the pan converter, and it went over here. But again, people have noted that the suction on the tools with these types of cleaners are very weak, um, if not extremely poor. Um, but again... Most people back in these days bought an upright because they had a lot of carpet. They didn't want to do... I mean, the suction that was there, the relatively poor suction that came out of the hose out of these machines, um, would be just enough to do their furniture. And of course, if you had more things where you required a hose, you bought a canister vacuum. Um, nowadays, it's not like that anymore. Um, nowadays, you just buy upright or canister based on your preference. 
so that really doesn't matter anymore. Uh, but that is the tour of... Get up here. Mm. It's a tour of the machine. Now I'm going to show you it working, so let's go ahead and unwind the cord here. Comes off just like that. Get it off there. Okay. It's a very smooth running machine. Handle release button is right down here. This is for your height adjustment. I haven't cleaned up here yet, so I'm not... I mean, this floor really isn't that dirty. I mean, I just cleaned the other day, so it's not really that dirty. But um, I'm not sure if I have to adjust the setting or not, but we'll find out. Foot levers here, on-off switches here. Let's go ahead and give it a try. And there we have it, the Hoover Decade. Yo, fresh haircut, fresh cars, fresh homeboys, fresh stars. About to bring four girls back five stars. Famous, without the fuss, I'm hard.